The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 17th, the St. Patrick's Day edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, though. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Please send it early. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right, I've got most of the C's trading to the upside. The only one that's not is the semis are up 10 points, three tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq's up. Uh, Nasdaq 100 is up uh, two tenths or 25 points. The S&P is up a half a percent, 21 half a percent for the Dow, which is 163 points. Uh, you've got the uh, gold trading up 36 bucks, nearly two percent. 1944 is the print. Silver printing at 2563. That's after a three and almost a three and three quarters percent move to the upside. Lights we crude seven and three quarters. Percent. That's seven dollars and thirty-four cents. Train out at one hundred two thirty-one, and we're going to go try to figure out what all this stuff means. Now, lead the charge dollar-wise today. The upside, uh, Mercado Libre had a good day yesterday, a good day today, up thirty-nine bucks. Eleven fifteen is the print. Amazon's up forty-two. Uh, Shopify's up twenty-two. That's three and a half percent. Tesla's up eighteen, two percent. To the downside. Hey, it's St. Patrick's Day. I think we don't look at anything in red. Today's just got to be a green day, right? And that'll be Stevie's contribution to the green environment. But. All right. Uh, well, but still, you want to know what's trading the downside. That's Booking Holdings, 48 bucks, a little over 2%. Solar Edge Technologies, 22 bucks, nearly 7%. Synaptics is now 9.5% or 4%. So there's certainly things to look at. But I think what we're going to start with, well, you know, what? I'm going to kind of give you a, this is kind of a, a couple of sets of interesting charts. I, I think it just shows us how difficult this market is going to be, perhaps, to navigate. Now, I'm just going to start with this chart here. Uh, those of you that are longtime listeners, you've seen me pull something like this out of the hat in the past. Now, this is a monthly time frame chart that takes us back to the 2009 bottom. You'll see a number of blue arrows and you'll see one red arrow. What this chart here is doing, it, it, and I'm really focused here on the red, so I'm really focused on the downside versus the upside. But what this is showing us is a number of consecutive sessions where a close is below the prior close. Now, it's not showing us the one knee-jerk reactions, uh, but we can call these really the... So here's, here's what we can take a look at. Coming off of the low in 2009, we've had, I believe it's eight, eight instances where we have seen two bar monthly corrections, such as the one through... February, the one where we're at right now, that very right arrow. So what's interesting about this is that from a pattern standpoint out here, um, there's nothing from this. Uh, now, we did have one during the 2011 time period. There was a five bar move to the downside out there. Never actually took out the prior swing point. Hey, the prior swing point here gets us all the way back into March of 2020. But right now, so this is really kind of interesting to me is that, you know, this two bar uh, level has held up. Now, the question is, because we, we certainly appear to have started perhaps a bear market. If I just change this chart to the daily time frame out here, let this thing populate. 
What you'll see is that since the highs that formed out here January 4th, we had one rally that lasted four bars. That's the one that took us into February 2nd. Today is going to become bar number four. So I say, hmm, something to think about. You can see we also had one rally out here. This was a three-day rally that took us in the highs of February 9th. So really, we should begin to learn something, let's say tomorrow. It's, uh, tomorrow's Friday, Monday, or what have you. But uh, interestingly, so if we're really, this, this should be, today should be the last day of the uh, rally out here if it follows along this uh, this simple guideline. So that's the first thing that I just simply throw out to you. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna review all of the equity future contracts. Of course, anything that you want me to take a look at, we will. And they are gonna provide us with different messages. But I wanted to give that first, that overview. Now the only other chart, or another chart I should say, that says, hey, just be cautious out here, is the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. And that's the panel that we're taking a look at here. What you'll notice, the first thing that I'm gonna have you notice is that the current print is at 171.80. Now, it doesn't really matter where it's at at 112 in the afternoon. It matters where it closes at 4 p.m. But let's assume that this was a 4 p.m. close. So first of all, when you get to the plus 150 level, you start to get into a oversold condition. It was really kind of interesting yesterday as I listened to a lot of the uh, commentary that was out there. Everybody talking about how oversold the market is. Yet I'm coming to you at 112 in the afternoon. I'm showing you a chart that shows us, that clearly shows us when we get up to these levels, this is where we should be expecting or anticipating the top. So we put that together with that four-day move out there. It says, hmm, something to think about. Now, the other aspect, if we close above 150, so just to kind of put this in context out there, I sort of get tired of that word out there, you know, context. Uh, but but uh, let me let me stay focused here. If you go back and you take a look at other instances when the advanced decline oscillator gets above the plus 150 level, what we typically see, not necessarily the next day or not necessarily, it doesn't have to be the next week, but what we typically see is a, it's a signal of further highs to come. So watch the advanced client oscillator as we come into the close. We'll certainly take a look at it tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be doing the, uh, the show at the normal time at 1 o'clock. So we'll certainly be able to look at it there. But here we put this together, which says, hey, be cautious because we're starting to get to. Now, not that it can't move higher. You can see we go back to time periods. This chart just takes us back to the 2020 time frame. Uh, but you can see back here in April of 2020, this was able to continue to advance higher. Of course, in that instance, we start looking for divergences. There's no divergence that exists right now. I just simply want to point to you, point out to you. Because you probably heard it yesterday as well. It didn't matter what channel you were listening to. If there was commentary and people were talking about the uh, the bottom or the bounce that, that we had out there, it was and conditions are so oversold. Well, with regard to the general market of the New York Stock Exchange, I'm not sure what they're smoking when they say that. So the other element here, and again, I think these are going to be tricky markets to navigate, very tricky markets to navigate. So what's the offsetting factor here? Right now, the offsetting factor of a market that would want to move higher is the mere fact that we are now day number two below the 50-day exponential moving average. And if the spot volatility is closed below 2705, that really suggests to you and I that we should see a move down to its lower Bollinger Band. That's a 50 to 1 setting on that Bollinger Band. And that would get us down to about 2170. If we do that, the S&P 500, the ES Mini, should continue to move higher. But maybe we see some type of pullback uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, that's really what the charts are kind of signaling to us. When we get back from this break, unless there's some questions that have come in or a caller, we'll start going through the uh, eight panel charts for equity futures and a few other things. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to Boulder, Colorado and speak with Joe. Joe, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, googly one, G-O-O-G, -O -O is the instrument I believe that you've called about. Uh, tell me what nope. you're doing, how I can nope. best help. No, it's G-O-G-L. 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 Okay. So, uh, what do you, oh, Golden Ocean Group. Okay, great. So, uh, something that uh, I haven't looked at before. So, Golden Ocean Group, what do they do? Shippers. Shippers, perfect. Okay. Tell me what you're doing and how I can help you. I am short. Um, I was listening to Tom O'Brien a couple weeks ago, and he said, look how fast this bad boy went up, and it can come down just as quickly, and with supply chain stuff and geopolitical stuff uh, it might might come down faster than it went up but I don't know what do you think well so I like that call I'm going to switch over so right now you're looking at the black background charts but that's not really telling the story so what I want to do is you thank you for sharing that dialogue and in your th thinking and now we can go take a look at a, a set of charts that really supports that and then you and I can make a determination as to where are things at now so I don't know when that conversation with Tom is it doesn't matter really when it is and so I've gone to my white background charts here this eight panel chart and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand out the daily time frame Joe for us to take a look at and what we're going to notice here is that when uh, ocean uh, when golden ocean group topped it was a TD nine count top and that that took place you got the actual nine count on uh, February 22nd remember on a nine count the high can form bars eight nine or has to form a bar eight nine to the bar following nine in this case here it was the bar following nine so that was your topping signal so um, regardless of how it went up what we like to be able to do, or at least what I like to be able to do here during the show, is help you to identify topping patterns. Not every, not er, this doesn't qualify as every topping pattern, but certain topping patterns when they're present, you and I pay attention to. And so in this case here, you got that top. Now, when you get a top, it says that price should pull back to support. So for different support levels, I'm basically using three different things. One of them happens to have three different things, but inside them, that would be the market profiles. But the first level that I take a look at, well, the first level, I try to figure out where is support. And in this case here, support, the first level of support really was the, uh, on that day, 
was its oscillator and change line. And the very next day, price got down to it, tested it, and rejected it. But it also created a new daily profile at that time. And that range was between 1148 and 1229. Turns out that three days ago, or a couple, well, actually before that, price was able to bust through the bottom of that profile. And that says, where's that next level of support? So we use our oscillator and change line. We use our three market profiles, assuming there's a top, a bottom, and a center. Sometimes there's only a top and a bottom, because oftentimes, or not oftentimes, but the center can be at the bottom. And then the last level would be the breakout area. And that is exactly what, take, what took place a couple of days ago. Price got right down to $10.87. Do you see that? Are you watching us on Tiger TV uh, by chance? I am, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see that level there. Now, I can, when I, here's one thing I can guarantee. There's not many things I can guarantee, but one thing I can guarantee is there's not an individual with inside the TFNN community that would have chosen 1087 as the breakout area. Just, just not anything that's taught to us. And that is the power. That's one of the additional power tools of the TD9 count. Not just the mere fact that it can help us to identify places where we're going to see a turn, but also where is the breakout level? And here, price got back to that breakout level, and that would have been the place, if I was on the air with you, I would have said, if you were short, that was the time to close that position. Because price got down there, it held that level, and now what we see is yesterday, price got back inside the profile, so you're back inside this little consolidation zone. Odds favor, now, uh, there is even an A to B equals CD to the downside, it looks like to me that has completed. So this would be a Gartley buy. So I'll just draw in the A to B point, and that would be from here to here. And I'm just going to take this over just see if this did qualify. Eh, it doesn't look like it really did. Yeah. Even though you had the, yesterday created that little Three River Morning Star, I, I don't think it really created the A to B equals CD pattern. So, okay, didn't do that. But what is it doing? Very likely right now. So you're short. Price should go target the 1208 area, 1208 to 1229. 1208. Uh, is a likely spot, but price is at a resistance area, which is the center of its profile, which is $11.83, let me see here. Yeah, 11, 1188 is the center of that uh, profile out there. So that's what the daily time frame chart is telling us on GOGL. Um, so the short piece of it may be over. Now let's look at the other, uh, any question about the daily chart here before I uh, switch over to the other charts? Nope, looks good. Okay. Is there is there anything that was confusing uh, uh, that I that I shared with you? Nope. Just to, to try I'm good. to clear, clear. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm good. Keep going. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So now we get to the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart really doesn't have any kind of a topping signal. And if anything, what's ta what took place last week and this week was price pulled back and tested that green oscillator and change line. And price is above its TD9 count breakdown level, which is 1139. So the weekly chart right now is communicating to us, Joe, that this wants higher price. Now, a green oscillator and change line tells us two things. Well, one, it tells us that the price oscillator is above zero. And then when price is above, a price oscillator is above zero, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, we don't have any kind of a uh, topping pattern. In fact, if anything, this says that this equity longer term wants to run higher. And the reason I say that is this had a TD9 count top in August of 2021. And last month, price closed above that level. So it's taken out that resistance area. And this is all suggesting to me that price uh, could move higher out here. I'm just looking at the other charts to see if there's anything else that I can see. There's really not much else that I can do, but that's the commentary on what the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts are communicating to us. What, what additional information can I provide you or, or try to clear up anything that I've said? Um, so before I close my short position, if um, if next week, you know, we're coming into quad witching, if next week we uh, turn down for a few days in the in the general markets, uh, would you expect an equity like this to follow suit for a few days? Or just no idea. To time my exit here. Yeah, so I don't know if you can really. I don't know the correlation between G O G L and let's say the general market or the S and P, uh, perhaps out there. So um, you know, I, I I don't know uh, the the answer to that. I I think you know I. In, in, you know, maybe it's worthwhile for you to just take a look and understand fundamentally what they do and where they're at out here. Um, yeah. 
you know, so I so I, I don't know if you can make a general. I, I I don't know the answer to your question. Is really what I want to well, say. I can I can study that correlation. I'll look into that. Thanks for yeah. your help. Appreciate it. Hey. Hey, you bet. And uh, thanks so much for calling, and best of luck to you. That was Joe in uh, Colorado. And folks, since I'm on these white background charts here, uh, oh, there was another question, which was a take a look at the GDX. I almost forgot about that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this fired up here. It may take a moment to uh, fire up, but what I can share with you so far while this is firing up, uh, what we're going to see on a daily basis is that price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. Once this populates, it's not. I'm looking at a different screen. That green oscillator and change line should be at about the 37.95 level. The price right now is trading out at 38.06. So look, these charts here will all be populated when we get back. We're going to take a look at GDX for SNP inside the Tiger's Den. Be back in a few. trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, GDX. That's the ETF for the uh, gold miners for S&P inside the uh, Tiger's Den. I'll give you the immediate play-by-play uh, -play here, and then we'll take a look at the bigger picture. So the immediate play-by-play, -play, we're going to focus in on the 30-minute time frame chart. So we'll just expand this out. Pull this back just a tad. And uh, so you can just see how these uh, signals here that, that I use 
uh, work. If we take a look at yesterday at uh, 3 p.m., price was moving lower, due with less relative energy, and you had that nice bullish engulfing candle that formed. Price is above that oscillator and change line, and that's led to a rally. That led to a rally that formed a TD9 count top right at TD9 count breakdown resistance, 38.38. That happened at uh, about an hour and a half ago at 12 noon. And now we can see that price is pulling back. We see that the oscillator and change line S&P has changed colors. So odds favor because we've got that top, because a resistance level held, that we should see price and that line catch up to each other. Now, the bottom of the current profile is right around where that line is at, at 37.72. So that would be the area to be watching. That may prove to be the next short-term buy level. Of course, you want to see price close above 38.38. If price closes below the 37.72 area, you know, price will pull back further. And the only other level of support that I have is the breakout area, 36.03. Of course, there is this big gap that took place overnight, so that could be an area of support. So that's the play-by-play -play on a 30-minute time frame. If we're looking for where is significant resistance out here, it's going to be between 39.03 and 39.86. 39.03, as you can see, is the top of the daily profile, and 39.86 is the top of the monthly profile. So that becomes where your sellers are really located at. Of course, we know that on a 30-minute basis, sellers are up at that, um, at that uh, TD9 count breakdown level out there uh, on a daily basis price is above that green oscillator and change line so you're really looking for a close above that level that is currently printing i think it was 37.95 30 uh, i take the what is it hold on 37.90, yeah, 37.94, 37.95. So now if price can close above that S&P, that's going to suggest that price should make a move to 39.03. But your confirmation, it's very clear, your confirmation of that move has to come from price closing above 38.38. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. That is where we had a TD9 count top on a 30-minute basis, and that's the area of focus. So I hope that that helps you out or provided you with the information that you were looking for. If not, then uh, just type something into the uh, den. In the meantime, Time. Let's go out to uh, Park City and speak with Peter. Peter, thanks for calling. Uh-oh. We were going to speak with Peter, and uh, he's gone. He wanted to take a look at the uh, S&Ps out there. So uh, and I don't know if what Peter was really calling about was the S&P or the ES Mini. So I'll take the liberty and just go to the ES Mini since uh, we can do that. We can go ahead and try to navigate through this. So now we're going to take a look at our eight panel charts out here. Now, let's do that same play by play. This is signaling to you and I that we should see a rally. Why is that? Well, if you take a look at the bottom three charts out here, the bottom three charts, the 120 minute, the 240 and the five hour, what is it that you see out here? Of course, maybe you can't see, although I think that the picture is relatively clear, both inside Tiger TV as well inside our den out there. And if Peter was on the phone with me, he would say, Stevie, you know what I see? I see TD nine count failures out there. And he would absolutely be right. And that suggests that we move to higher ground. No, it's a 240-minute chart that's really going to have that next little resistance area. And that next little resistance area, Peter, is going to be at 4387.50. We're at 4382.00 right now. So if price can close above 4387.50 on a four-hour time frame. I believe this one, this bar finishes at 2 p.m. Let me just make sure here. Uh, yeah, at 2 p.m. So now it doesn't have to close above that at 2 p.m. But if it does close above it at 2 p.m., that's telling you about further rally to come. If price doesn't close above it, just know that that's your resistance level that has to be overtaken. It should be overtaken based upon these TD9 count failures. But what it could, it should, it doesn't always happen out there. And you just want to know where the sellers are hanging out. And that's the level. But price should be able to take that. And if it does, then we should see the ES Mini continue to rally. That's coming from those three time frame charts out there. Rally to where? Well, there would really be a couple of different levels. Now, the profiles that I have, we went through this yesterday, that I have on the white background charts are different than the black background charts. And I can show you two black brown chart, two black brown charts that have different profile levels. So we use them all. So at this stage here, here's what we know. We're just going with the white background charts. And that is that the move then should take us up to about the 4438 level. So close above 4387.50 suggests that we should see a move to 4438. A move above 4438 says we get back to the break breakout level or breakdown area I should say and that's at 4514 now at 4496 that's another area that happens to be the green oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame so you've got 4496 you have well you've got 4514 4496 4438 at 4387.50. Those would really be the levels to be monitoring for the ES Mini. So, Peter, even though you're not there, thanks for calling in. I, I am actually. Steve, are you there? Oh, 
Oh, you are here. How about that? No, I, sorry. I called back sorry when that. I didn't have the audio. Actually, I wanted to look. I was getting confused. Uh, I wanted to look at the black screen charts uh, for the ES Mini Daily Weekly. Um, for the longest time, it seemed like the weekly, the bottom of the weekly profile was 43.31. And I'm not sure if there was a new one formed or if that one's still intact. So, okay, so I've got the black background screens up on my chart right now. Uh, black, back, uh, black background charts up on my screen. Boy, we, uh, you, you'd almost think I've been celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> um, so on the left-hand side, the upper left-hand side is a June contract. Mm -hmm. So we have rolled over to different contracts. And on the March contract, there might have been a different level out there. So that's okay. One. I'm only seeing your white charts at the moment. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, getting used to the new system didn't change it. So give thank you for sharing, and uh, thank you for not hitting me on I am on my head out there. <laughs> All right. So now you got the black background screens, and in the June contract, the profile levels, prices trade above resistance. In fact, closed above resistance yesterday, which was forty three twenty six. If we go to Stevie's synthetic contract, that would be the one on the right, because we've just rolled over from March to June. This is perhaps, I look, they're all important levels. I would say this, the one on the upper right-hand side, is the one that's a, a little bit more accurate of the two, but they're, they both have meaning. Um, price is sitting right at the top of that profile, and that profile is 43.81. So if price can close about 43.81, and 43.87.50, that was that 240-minute uh, uh, breakdown level. That would then suggest, Peter, that moved to 44.38. Um, we could also see prices trading into resistance and descending trend line area, too. So if price can close above 43.81.75, you know, that would be a, that would be a positive um, outcome here. So with regard to the 43.83 level, I just wonder if I go back to this set of charts here. Yeah, can you I also think pull that, back up that that set with the weekly as well? So on the weekly charts out here, I would come and take a look at this tab. And on this tab here, which the ES mini that we're looking at, I'm just going to expand this out, and we'll pull this back a, a bit here. And so there is a new profile that is attempting to form. Peter, we won't have we won't have confirmation of this until Sunday evening, but we use the information. You can see that price is right up to the center of its bearish structured weekly profile, which is at forty three eighty three, um, and then you've got resistance. If price can get above this level, then that suggests that move to the forty four eighty level. Any other questions about the weekly chart? No, I'm going back and going to watch it in the archive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, yeah, no, it's. Uh, no, I find it interesting. I was going to email you about the uh, NYSC oscillator, but you already took care of that. I was okay, curious perfect. about getting up to that 150. So, perfect. Uh, have a great St. Patty's Day. Yeah. You too, Peter. <laughs> great to talk to you. That was Peter in Park City. We'll be back in just a few, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 267. All the U.S. indices are trading to the upside now. Let's go out to Orlando, Florida, and speak with Rich. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are thanks, you doing Steve. today? I'm doing well. Listen, St. Patrick's Day. So I couldn't have a prettier day for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Hey, I you know I was picking up food two nights ago, uh, just a little diner uh, uh, near near me, and they had the Weather Channel on, and there was a nasty set of storms rolling. It was kind of a little bit, I think, to the west, just to the west of Orlando. I mean, some tornadoes and everything. How did you fare through that? Well, we had quite a bit of rain earlier in the week. I mean, yeah, it was kind of tough, but it's a beautiful day today, that's for sure. Wow, that's great. Glad to hear it. Now, you want to take a look at Walmart, I believe. Uh, WMP is a Correct. ticker well, symbol. Actually, I'm looking to go short. So that's really what my interest is in Walmart. What do you think? What do I think about going short Walmart? Um, great question. So the what price, I'm going to look at a daily chart, and there was a swing point that was attacked yesterday. And that swing point was from January 14th, and that had 8.9 million shares. And as that was attacked yesterday, it was with 8.2 million shares. That's still coming into that area with pretty good volume out there. Price above the top of the daily profile. If you're going to go short, if you're going to go short, then I would at least wait for price to get back up to that 146.63 uh, type level. 147.31 is the top of the uh, monthly profile, so that would also be where sellers are lurking. And on a weekly time frame, that level is at 150.08, and that's the top of its bear structured weekly profile. So I think all that being said, I'd probably wait for price to get up to the 150.08 area. And the question is, do we see any signs that maybe that will unfold? So let's try to figure that one out. And if we look at the daily time frame chart here, what I don't see with regard to the daily time frame from Walmart is any kind of a topping signal. Today looks like it'll form bar number five of a TD9 count. It's above its green oscillator and change line. That is bullish. So this suggests on a daily basis. So if you're asking me, do I see a pattern that would suggest that you go short now? The answer is no. What pattern could there be on a daily basis that would take you into a short position? And that could be a sell the D point. That could be an A to B equals CD. And if I put this in here, which I'm going to, the A point that I would start with here, Rich, is from February 24th. That would be the A point. The B point for me would be the high from March the 7th. And then the C point out here would be the low from March 9th. Now, the B point that we referred to, that was the one from March the 7th. That's been passed with mm -hmm. light volume. Nonetheless, even though you pass a B point with light volume, you could then create what we call a tiger, you know, sell the D point or tiger butterfly, whatever this might turn into. But that price projection gets you the 149.76 level. And remember the top of the weekly profile, Rich, 150.08. Mm -hmm. So I'd be more comfortable right now saying that that could potentially be the level. And that's just simply coming back to this 
white background daily time frame and not seeing any kind of a uh, topping signal here. Any questions about the daily time frame before I move to the weekly well, the and monthly? Just for us. The question um, I what I was looking at is that this thing has kind of bounced through this uh, 145 four times. It did it once in December. It did yep. it once in uh, late, late November, once in December, once in January. It, and, yeah. you know, it, and each time it's been progressively lesser volume. It's like, you know, two, uh, yesterday was lesser volume than the other three times it went to 145. And I guess that's what I was looking at um, in terms of, you know, kind of a stall, you know, that it degrees having difficulty getting through that 140, I mean, 145, 146 level. Well, let's take a look at that because the volume that I have, and we may have different volume metrics, uh, but the, the first time up in that level that I'm looking at, Rich, as a day is November 26, and there were 7 million shares. Correct. And yesterday there was 8 million okay. shares, right? Was it was it 8 or was it 7? Uh, it, it was 8. So that's higher something. volume. That's higher volume. So there was 13 million on December 16th. And then the uh, and then the day that we're looking at was January 14th, about 8.9. I'm not seeing the type of lightish volume. Um, that's not that price can't stop there. It's just, uh, you know, if price is going to stop there, let's say so. Let's let's just go with your theory that, hey, this is a level where price has turned down before. And if that is the case, then what we should see out here is we should see some type of short term topping signal. I'm just going to go to the 30 minute chart out here. So let's take a look okay. at that and, and can get to do our analysis. And granted, uh, we did get a topping signal uh, yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was really confirmed at 1030. And that was the Rhodes Mentum indicator signal here. But it looks like to me, um, you know, so even, you know, it led to price moving lower. I don't know why it found support where it did. We'd have to probably go take a look at other time frames out there. But let's not waste our time doing that. Right now sure. on the play by play message, price is taking on resistance, which is the top of the 30 minute profile. And that profile level is 145.11. You've got another 13 minutes for this bar to end. If you close above that, and certainly the next bar after that, if it closes above that, that suggests that you're going to at least go make a run for the high of yesterday. And again, that high out there was at 146.94. So I don't really see the topping signal per se just yet now price might hold this okay. resistance level you know it, it might hold this resistance level but if i'm you because you want to take a look at that short position i would see uh, i'd say watch 145 11 you know and okay. if you see it close above that it says it wants to move higher and you can at least short it from a different uh, a different level out there on a weekly basis i just see a consolidation with inside that weekly profile and so that's suggesting getting back up to that 150 level. I don't really see anything else out here on the monthly time frame to, uh, to help us. It was really a TD9 count top back in July, and that's just led to a sideways consolidation. So if anything, I see more of a consolidation. And then in that instance, it says you should really sell the top of the consolidation, which is all the way up at 153.66. Okay. And the bottom of the consolidation is? Uh, you know, I... I yeah, I'd, I'd use probably about 134.17. It could be lower than that. But right now, that's what, that's in essence the range that I would use. I mean, it could easily be down at the 126 level, but I'd probably be looking at 134. Okay. Listen, Steve, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, you are most welcome. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. And have a happy St. Patrick's Day. That was Rich in Orlando. Mm -hmm. You bet, you bet. So uh, I do have, uh, looks like uh, one request that has come in. So let's take care of this. This is from uh, JT in New York. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol DSL. So I think we're on the black background charts. I hope we are. Uh, yes, we are. So in the case of DSL, it just says, uh, tell me if it's put in a bottom. Ah, so for that question, we got to go to the white background charts. So now we're going to pick up, this is Diane on Double Line Income Solutions. Okay. Uh, the answer is... So I don't have a bottom signal for the daily time frame. You're going to see a TD9 count, but the low so far was on bar number seven, not bar number eight or nine. Nonetheless, out here, uh, JT, is price is trying to get back inside its daily profile. And if price is able to close above today, price is able to close above 1402, we're trading at 1402, but can close above 1402, 1421, 1441, and 1464 become the targets. Now, was there a bottom on a weekly basis? 
The weekly basis says, yeah, that's a possibility because this week happens to be wave number seven. That is letter G. Now, you wouldn't know until next week. In order for that to be a confirmed wave number seven, you have to have a higher low. But on a monthly basis, or I'm sorry, on a weekly basis, you definitely have a bottom signal to pay attention to. And on a monthly basis, you are at bar number nine of a TD9 count. So look, the larger term time frame say, yeah, this could be forming a bottom out here. Right now, we're just going to call this what I see it is, which is a counter trend rally unless price close above 1464. So JT, thanks much for writing in. Happy St. Patty's Day to you as well. I hope that helps. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Be back in just a few, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, question came in, what's, uh, what's the uh, key level to be watching inside the uh, spot volatility index out here in Dan? That's the 50-day exponential moving average currently printed at 2703. The VIX is at 2537. It closed below 2703. Suggests higher price coming at us for the ES Mini. Now, let's go take a look at the play-by-play, -play, the short-term time frame chart. On the short-term time frame chart, that's going to be the 30-minute chart. What we're going to see here is that the uh, NQ, nope, I take that back, the Dow and the Russell 2000. 
are the only ones right now on a 30-minute basis that are going to complete bar nine of a TD9 count. Now, it can be the high that's in place right now, or it can be a higher high that forms between 2 and 2.30. So you want to watch for that. They are the ones that are suggesting we should see some type of retracement. I don't have, it'd be nice to have a unanimous message, but we don't have unanimous message. The 30-minute charts for the ESDNQ are saying, hey, Stevie, I don't know what you're talking about out there. But I do know what I'm talking about. And what I am talking about is the mere fact that you've got TD9 counts for the Dow and the Russell 2000. Now, the cool thing about those patterns, folks, is that whether it's this high during this half hour or a higher high that takes place when uh, David White, uh, our favorite polar bear, is on, is mark those points. Because if price closes above those highs, then that tells you about a significant momentum move to the upside for the short-term time frame out there. And that would be a positive. And that would just say the ESNQ knew what they were talking about, whereas the Dow and the Russell 2000 did not. So that's what I would be watching. I don't know if there's really anything else that I can uh, share with you. I mean, I can share with you everything possible, but I think we've, we've really kind of covered it for the the equity markets out here. Um, I don't know what last can I show you. Let's uh, change screens here, uh, change windows. We'll go back, just take a quick peek at our market update uh, charts out here, see if there's anything showing up there that is worthwhile to discuss. And here's that nine panel market update chart. Um, not much has really changed since we came on the air. So, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Although I do see 30 year Treasury, they're sitting really right at support. The lovely watching there is 151 and 22 30 seconds. Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next, our favorite polar bear. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, folks.